Hello and welcome back. In today's session, we will look at an introduction to Kubernetes. Although we are uh, talking about EKS, uh, but we will first need to know about Kubernetes because EKS under the hood is uh, making use of Kubernetes to uh, do all the wonderful orchestration tasks for us. And if you do not understand what is going on in the underlying infrastructure of your Kubernetes and what it does before we put EKS over uh, the top of it, then we might have a very hard time understanding uh, EKS itself. So having the context and foundation of Kubernetes is really important to start understanding EKS. So Kubernetes, uh, which is also often abbreviated as k it's an open source platform which was developed by Google and we can use this to manage our containerized applications. Now, this uh, Kubernetes, it mainly helps us to automate our uh, deployment process, the containerized applications, uh, scaling and management of our containerized applications which ensures that uh, our applications run reliably even in very complex and dynamic environments. So that's where uh, your Kubernetes can be really useful. And uh, uh, whenever we talk about containerizing our applications, Kubernetes is one of the very widely used uh, uh, tool that we have out there in the uh, market. Now, uh, when we talk about the features of your Kubernetes, uh, one, it gives you container orchestration. Uh, now with this, we can automatically schedule and deploy our containers across a cluster of machines. So and you can create a cluster, you can have your uh, control plane nodes, your worker nodes, and then you can start uh, orchestrating your contain containers across this uh, cluster then uh, it provides scaling so uh, you can dynamically adjust the number of containers that are running uh, based on the resource demand so if your load is high then you can add more pods and if your load is less then you can reduce the uh, number of pods so you can um, uh, dynamically scale your pods as well then it also provides load balancing uh, which helps you to distribute your traffic evenly to your pods which ensures that your application is highly available and your application is accessible to your users then it also provides self-healing which will automatically restart your containers which have failed um, replace any containers which are not uh, responsive and also evict containers from uh, the nodes which are not responsive so it automatically takes care of all those things for us and then finally it has a declarative configuration so we can define the state of our application and kubernetes maintains it for you so uh, you can uh, write uh, manifest files for your uh, different different components and you can start managing those components uh, from your Kubernetes as well. So that's about the features that we have uh, when we talk about your Kubernetes. Now, let's start with a simple scenario which will allow us to uh, map the core concepts of hosting a web application uh, to designing and building a Kubernetes environment. So consider we have a traditional uh, three-tier web application. So uh, we have the front end, we have the application logic tier, and then finally we have the database tier where uh, we will be storing all of our data. Now for us to host this uh, traditional uh, three-tier web application, we can start uh, with provisioning three servers. So let's say we are having uh, three EC2 instances. So one instance for each of your uh, tier. Now we might then want to simplify this even more by having containers so that uh, we can wrap the application code that we can deploy. And for this, we can make use of your tools like Docker, which is hosted on your EC2 instance. Now, what if we decided to move over to Kubernetes and fully orchestrate the containerized application? Now, we would still need to um, containerize this application and the most popular tool is your docker so you know basically creating container images and all now which is what i've already mentioned here and we will stick to this for now 
Now, in order to start working with your Kubernetes, we will need to first start off by building our Kubernetes cluster. Now, in the world of Kubernetes, your cluster is simply a traditional way of uh, uh, computing a collection of nodes. So basically, you'll have multiple nodes and these nodes could be your physical machines. Uh, it can be your um, virtual servers which are running in the cloud or in the on-premises right and simply when we talk about a node we are simply talking about a machine think of it as an ec2 instance now once we are done creating our cluster uh, we will need to add some nodes so basically your machines and uh, when we talk about the machines in your cluster we have two types of machines we have the control plane node and then we have the worker nodes so generally within your cluster you'll have one control plane node and then you'll have multiple worker nodes now this um, control plane node is where your uh, managing of your resources provisioning of your uh, resources is done and we'll have tools that can be used to uh, take care of uh, orchestration related tasks such as uh, scaling your node machines updating the application and launching our application into this cluster and the worker nodes on the uh, other hand is where our application is actually running as container so you can think of these worker nodes as your traditional vms and uh, that is what we have talked about here um, earlier so generally your cluster contains a control plane node and multiple worker nodes so control plane is where all of your uh, main provisioning the resources uh, uh, creating the manifest file and everything is done and then worker nodes is where your actual application is um, run now uh, when we talk about your container you can uh, think of it as a um, uh, application now it must be contained inside a pod so whenever um, in kubernetes when we talk about a container your container will always be inside a pod. Now pod is a Kubernetes concept and this is the basic unit of your Kubernetes. And while um, technically you can have more than one container inside a pod, but it's not a best practice to run more than one container inside a pod. So it is always recommended that you run only one container inside a pod, but though technically you can run more than one container if needed. So we should always stick to one container running inside a pod and they should have a one to one relationship. So basically one pod should contain one container only. So here, as you can see, we have an image here and uh, this will be our container image, the containerized application. And just for the sake of understanding, uh, this represents our front end application. And uh, this is what is wrapped inside our pod. Now we will talk more about your pods in the um, upcoming sessions. So in this example of our three tier application, uh, the um, uh, front end tier, your application logic tier and your database tier, we can have a single worker node with three separate pods running and then each of these pods will contain an instance of your uh, various tier of our application. So we'll have a pod for the front end, we'll have a pod for the application logic and then we'll have a pod for your uh, uh, database. Now, of course, having um, all the pods in one single node will leave us with a single point of failure, right? So if this machine goes down, then all the pods are gone. So this becomes a single point of failure for us. And just like in traditional hosting, we will need to set up fault tolerance and high availability for our application. And to overcome this issue, we can what we can do is we can provision three worker nodes so each worker node for our pod and you know basically we'll have a front end pod in one worker node your application logic in one worker node and then finally the database pod in one worker node but this also does not exactly solve the problem for us 
we are still having uh, one single instance for each tier of our application and if either the pod fails or if the node fails we are still uh, at the risk of service disruption right so let's say if my uh, this worker node goes down then my database pod will be unavailable or if this worker node goes down my application logic is uh, unavailable so here um, uh, in the below image what i've done is i have increased um, the number of worker nodes to three and across these three worker nodes we have a mixture of the different layers of our application um, uh, logic so basically the um, uh, the pods so in each of the worker node we'll have the front end pod the application logic pod and the database pod so now we have three worker nodes and each of them now has a single instance and basically by instance we are talking about a container image the container running inside a pod so now uh, if one of the worker node goes down there are still two worker nodes each having their own version uh, to be able to run and similarly if one of the pod goes down there are additional pods running across the worker nodes to continue serving the requests so until now we have talked about a very traditional web application but in reality a microservice approach can be much more modern way to deal uh, with a use case like this now it's likely that our application is in fact made up of many smaller applications that handle very specific tasks like you know retrieving your order history handling your payments uh, allowing new signups for your customers and many more now the complexity of communicating between microservices is often a reason that kubernetes and its orchestration capabilities are chosen now this is still a very small use case that i've shown here but hopefully the concepts of your worker nodes and pods are making sense to you whenever uh, we want to scale up or scale down our individual services we do this by adding new pods now, pods are nothing but your containers and as we grow our services we need more compute to host these pods and so we need to add more worker nodes now we haven't talked much about the control plane node but imagine that as our cluster grows and more pods are being deleted updated created the control plane node too needs increasing to uh, share the workload of these tasks among them so that's about the introduction to kubernetes that i have so like i said uh, though we are talking about eks but uh, under the hood it still makes use of kubernetes and understanding what exactly your kubernetes is the cluster and everything is really important uh, we will be talking more about your cluster the different components that we have in the cluster in the um, upcoming sessions but that's all i have as part of your introduction to kubernetes uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.